He is coming. Cover your butt. After my last video dealing with the claim that the moon is flat, I appear to have attracted a flat earther who has been vomiting all over my comments section for the last 24 hours. I'd figured I'd make a short little video explaining why this flat earther is, well, very, very wrong. Quantum Eraser, also known as Independent Variable John, has been copying and pasting this comment all over my video. His main contention is simple. Spherical objects or convex objects cannot reflect light uniformly by the very nature of their shape. So let's take a closer look at the video that Quantum Eraser is trying to defend. World History Official claimed that a spherical object could not reflect light uniformly and presented this image in order to back up his claim. Since a 3D model seemed to be good enough for World History Official, I decided that I would do the same thing. This is Blender, a 3D modeling program. Here I have created a sphere that is being lit by a small local light source. As you can see where the light hits the sphere at a 90 degree angle, right here, that area is very bright. And the areas past that, the areas where the light is hitting at an angle, we start seeing that gradient that I spoke about earlier until we get to the edge where the light can no longer make it past the curve and it's now dark. This is what happens when you have a small local light source. My contention is that you will get the same kind of lighting pattern that World History Official shows you if you have a small and local light source. However, if you have a bigger light source, a light source that allows light to arrive at the sphere at a 90 degree angle, then you will get a very different kind of lighting pattern. What if we were to change this light from acting like a small local light source and instead acted like the sun? We would get this. As you can see, we no longer have these bright area where the light was hitting at a 90 degree angle because now the entire surface has the light hitting at a 90 degree angle. Of course, this wasn't enough. There is a double standard when it comes to backing up your claims between globetards and flat earthers. A flat earther can simply make a claim and not back it up with anything, while a globetard must do an infinite amount more work before their evidence is considered valid. My claim is simple. If the light source is larger than the object, then the light will reach the object at a 90 degree angle, allowing a spherical object to have uniform lighting. In order to test this, I did what no flat earther will ever bother to do, and I decided to try it out in real life. This is a styrofoam ball I bought at Michael's for like $5. I am pointing a flashlight at it, mimicking a small and local light source. As you can tell, this image matches the same kind of image that World History Official was showing us. This is what happens when you have a small local light source. Side by side, you can see that my picture matches both the example given by World History Official and the model I created in Blender. All that's left now is to find a light source that is bigger than my sphere and see what happens when it shines on the sphere. Thankfully, both John and I have access to a large and powerful light source, the sun. Even on a flat earth, the sun is substantially larger than my styrofoam ball. So the light that reaches the ball will arrive at a 90 degree angle. So what will this look like? Before I show you the result, Remember that according to World History Official and John, this is what we should expect. Drum roll, please. As you can very plainly see, the sphere is evenly illuminated by the sunlight. And of course, this won't be good enough, because I failed to mention my independent variable or something. But I would like to remind everyone that I have done more to back up my claim than both World History Official and John. World History Official only provided a single image of a 3D model lit by a small local light source. And John, well, John provided nothing. John has made the same mistake that World History Official made. 
he jumped to his conclusion without thinking about what he said. John, instead of just repeating the same claim, how about you try to prove me wrong instead? Go out and find a sphere and a light source that is larger than the sphere. Show me images of light creating the pattern you think it should. I doubt you'll do this. My bet is you will continue to mindlessly regurgitate the same claim over and over again.